Do you know when you press that red thing, that actually, I can see you are doing that. Are we, are we, are I can standing? see you doing that because I'm sat next to you <laughs> in the same room. So I don't need to tell you. Anyway, it's John McIntyre here, the autoresponder guy. And I'm, I'm here with uh, my friend and uh, not really a colleague, but friend, Dan. That's not a very funny joke, is it? Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Mildly insulting. Thank you. It's just someone that I dragged into a hotel room. Because that n- none, of, none of that sounds odd. But as you were, Jonathan. <laughs> I'm sharing a hotel room with this guy for a few days. Anyway, Dan Meredith, coming all the way from the UK. I'm, I'm here from Thailand. Well, I was from, am from, live in Thailand, but now we're both in the States. Stanford, Connecticut for Titans yep. of Direct Response, which is a, a conference with uh, the biggest and best copywriters uh, living right now on the planet. And uh, to celebrate, Marty Edelston. Yeah, passing, sadly. Passing, yeah. So he was the founder of Boardroom, a, a huge uh, publishing company that's still around, actually just across there at the window. But anyway, this big sort of seminar with these, uh, it's all copywriters, direct response, direct mail, internet Got guys, like Entrepreneurs and... Entrepreneurs yeah, and... Very, just, su- some mu- very successful but understated people. Like the guy you were sat next to at lunch today, just, I just own a 80 million turn of a business. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like, all right, how, yeah, how's, how's your business going? Oh, just, we, we did 80 million last year, so we're doing all right. Interesting. 80 million, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're doing good. They're doing good. I mean, it's always funny, those conversations. Anyway... Before we, we'll talk about the sort of what we've been learning and what we've been getting out of the uh, the conference in a second. But first, I'd like my buddy Dan here, not my colleague, like I said. Oh, we could be colleagues if we do we this could podcast. Be. Let us know if, if you enjoy this, because this is a random first time thing. If you do, we'll, we'll, we'll do more of it. There's going to be three of these for the conference, by the way. Yes. So, give people an intro. Uh, give the listener, because you know, we're going to talk to one person, yes. not a group of people. Give the listener an intro on who you are, what you do, and... and uh, story. Name's Dan, Dan Meredith. Uh, my online business is I am the fitness copywriter.com. Have a real bricks and mortar fitness business too. Learn about copywriting, direct response, email marketing, all this stuff. I started mid December last year from a guy called Paul Moore. Paul actually introduced me to this individual uh, seated on my left here, the likes of Ben Settle, Andre Chaperon. Um, Basically, I went full on crazy into it. Um, ended up getting a job working for a guy called Ryan Levesque. You should look him up. He's one of the top sort of funnel specialists online right now. Mm. And through one of Rob's friends, sorry, Rob, your friend Rob, uh, Rob Hanley, who I met, uh, he helped me get my consultancy career off the ground. So basically, I've gone from zero to lot um, in the online world from just you know being me. Literally, probably I'd say like a power networker. You yeah, are a legend of a networker. I will give you that. I'd probably say struggling to make ends meet with the online stuff like mm-hmm. nine months ago to kind of a couple of businesses having staff. You know, just really dived sort of deep Smash. into it. So yeah, so this kind of event was for me, kind of you know almost kind of you know I've heard of these names, I've read their stuff, and you know me and you were talking on the Skype with our sort mm-hmm. of bi-monthly catch up slash man chat slash business man chat I mean, let's go with that well yeah. let's let's talk about that then not the man chats about who's here so we're here with i mean we'll go through the sort of stuff that given us in a second but we got we had brian kurtz who's the director or founder he's one of the founders of v- vice president he's vice VP. president yeah. okay vice president of boardroom which is this company by marty we mentioned him a minute ago huge uh, direct response company they employ the best copywriters in the world to to write their packages all that sort of stuff if, if you're familiar with copywriting just had a coffee, that's why I'm talking so fast. If you're familiar with copywriting and writing sales letters out by hand, uh, we're talking like the biggest and best copywriters on the planet right now, here today. So we've got Brian Kurtz kick things off. Yep, we had Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy. Then we had the... Was it Mount the, Rushmore? The Mount Rushmore of copywriters. So these the four guys, best copywriters, right? Yeah, four. All these guys do and try and beat each other's previous oh. best. So it's like having the best, best possible... They're like 100 meter sprinters. They're always trying to outdo each other by a fraction of a fraction of a mount, which can mean like tens if not hundreds of thousands if not millions of profit and these guys mm-hmm. are just i've got to be honest a real interesting bunch on that stage i mean you they're some seriously extroverted characters some people you would you'd walk past and you would you wouldn't you just look like a like a guy who's doing some hardware shopping or something and this guy's worth like tens of millions that's the funny thing you is yeah some places, unusual right? yeah not unusual looking but just like when you meet successful especially successful business people often they just look like normal people I mean, which which is I mean, once you've once you've kind of met a few, like you, you realize that it makes sense. Like, the, what, what else would yeah. it look like? But you know, sometimes it's like, oh, this this guy's like really, you know, he's a, he's one of the best copywriters in the world, and he, and he looks like your dad's friend. Yeah, like yeah, 
you'd catch him at the bar drinking a beer or something. Yeah, yeah. normal people. So anyway, then we had Gary Bensavanger. Yeah, which to be fair, we he's kind of uh, you know all the guys here rate him as the their one influence. of the best. And I'd never seen him speak. I'd read some of his stuff, and you know I've got to be honest. I started reading him. He's a very unassuming guy, nice guy, very I'd say not softly spoken, but very very articulate, just a nice guy. I would say. And then the stuff yeah. he came out with, to be honest with you, I mean, he's a guy who is a true wordsmith, a real craftsman with language. Mm-hmm. And yet he gave us, I think it was 21 tips, and I'd say only about three of them really relate, maybe four, were actually about copy and the structure. It was mm-hmm. a lot of business and life lessons. And that's what I've got so far from today is, yeah, they, they talk about, you know, the techniques of how they do it, but <coughs> they ended up talking mainly about life and... We got four minutes. That's great, because do, do you know what I, do you know what I did there? For those of you who are not in copyright, and that was called what a pattern interrupt. So what he did there, did the equipment just smash through, smash through. See that I might just go a little closer. But yeah, thank you, Jonathan. Good job, his muscles aren't too big. No. But anyway, so we had Gary, Gary B. <laughs> uh, Gary B. He did his thing, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about some tips. Just to say, we'll wrap this up with the tips. But then we had Gary B. and Ken McCarthy, who were the founder of the internet, apparently. People say Al Gore invented the internet, but if you did that, well, then Ken McCarthy invented Al Gore. That was the joke that we yeah. that they said before. But, um, all right, well, let's, let's, let's to, to finish this off, because we're going to do a couple of these videos, right? We're here for another few days. We've got an amazing day tomorrow planned, and we've got dinner with a whole bunch of these, yeah. these legends tomorrow night. With we've got, I, I can't, do you know what? I mean, like we're, we're lucky. we kind of got some good friends, and obviously we've done work with some good people, but... Yeah, the list of people we're sat with tomorrow yeah, yeah. is... is uh, so we're going to have to get together tomorrow afternoon to do another one of these short, with some stuff, videos. Some actual... Yeah, some tips. actual content. We'll, we'll get to some content in a section. Should we, we do down stuff or can I mean, I, quite, I, I actually quite like the... Well, I like this, right? Yeah, this sounds that's... really cool. So one thing I thought was interesting about... Um, sorry, just to, re- just to finish that final thought, that open loop, so I don't want to leave it open for people, is uh, we're going to do a few of these videos. We'll do another one tomorrow, and then we'll probably do another one Saturday to wrap yeah. it up. So this, it's a three-part video podcast series. Should we write maybe as well, just for your list as well, when we finished it all? Because I think we need some time. We're going to be full-on tourists um, for a day or two. Mm. Maybe just write down a few takeaways. You could just send out, like, just little cliff notes so they can kind of... Yeah, we'll, we could do that too. Yeah, I think that'd be cool too. We could do that too. Yeah. We could do that too. Anyway, so... Well, let's do that. We'll talk about uh, the Dan Kennedy stuff. One thing I thought about that today was that he, I mean, a lot of it was just fundamentals, but the interesting part was that he uh, hit on, the main fact was that the more emotional, people buy yeah. emotion. It's yeah. basically that. So he had the seven, he calls it the seven dark arts devices, which is, you know, a fancy way to basically say seven different ways you can pull on someone's emotional heartstrings to make them do stuff that yeah. you want them to do. Um, but I just thought that was a very interesting thing. When, you, when you're trying to write copy and you're trying to make someone do something, you really have to tap into their emotion. It's not about the facts, yeah. you know, making a list of facts and benefits and all that crap. It's the emotion. Well, what I liked is when he went through the copy, he actually picked out sections like this bit here is about, say, guilt. This bit here is, say, about affinity. And he would actually pick out the points and he would try and get, not all of them, but he would try and get a selection of them in there to make sure he had that emotional hook. Look at this example, right? So a man takes his wife and kids, by the way, this is one of the books they gave us. Um, a man takes his wife for free, just to, as a thank you for going to the conference, I guess. Anyway, a man takes his wife and kids to Disney, pays extra for a speed pass or even more for a private guide to go to the front of every line. So he's got seven things, the seven dark arts devices. So let's go through. Well, I'll do one and then you do one and we'll cool. go through all seven. So he does lust, and he, which is basically he hopes for gratitude sex from his wife. Experience may well tell him that the odds aren't good, but hope springs eternal. So that's number one. Uh, then he had escape, as in he doesn't want to stand in line for a long time. Doesn't want to mess with kids, just wants to get in there, get it done. He's trying to escape that problem. Escape the tedium. Uh, number three is esteem, so he's going to feel better about himself as a good provider. As a good dad. Uh, fear, as in if he doesn't spend the money, he then his family might have a bad experience. You know, he's never going to hear the end of it. His wife's going to have a go at him. His kids are going to be acting up. So, yeah, that's the fair part. Mm-hmm. Number five is guilt. So he's promised and reneged on other vacations, uh, and he's neglected his family for work. So he feels bad about this, and this is one of the reasons he feels he needs to pay extra for these passes at Disneyland. And th- this is my favorite, is affinity. So what he's by saying is by doing this, he, he's a VIP. He's part of the in crowd, and 
you know, if you think about all the masterminds and groups that we always hear about, you know, that's it. You're you're paying to be in that. It's a good example in of that this group. Yeah, is like me sending you a letter and saying, "Hey, Dan, you know, I was a really, uh, I was a really an amazing fitness person, and you know, a guy with a six pack and all the biggest muscles in the Those world. Things I had Would years you ago, like yeah. to? Yeah. So basically, I'm creating a frame here where I guess an image that he identifies with, whether or not whether or not he's actually that guy is beside the point. The point is that he he aspires to be that guy. Yep. And then I can then say, well, you know, can you do this or something like that? I want to be in that group. Yeah, you've got that thing. affinity with that person. Yeah. Um, and then number seven was greed. So this guy wants to get what most others can't have, so he's visible to himself and others. So is that, is everyone else stands there sweating in line at Disney, uh, and he whisks, he gets to whisk his family past it onto the rides. Yeah. So the cool part, the, I mean, there's seven things there. Really there's I'm, so much. Yeah. Seven sort of angles, but it's just about... It's the like, tapping into that emotion. Yeah, and it's drilling it in. If any of you haven't like heard of Dan Kennedy, I mean, he, I think he said he turns 60, isn't it, soon? Something like that, yeah. He has written so much. I mean, he's literally given us so much away at this event. It's awesome. Like, if you haven't, like, like there's just my bed is just piled full of this stuff. Check out Dan Kennedy stuff. I mean, his ultimate sales letter, sent it to the affluent, two of the ones that I've used. Absolute gold. I mean, yeah, it's brilliant stuff. But yeah, he's, a re- he's really big on just unpicking those little emotional strings and just tugging on them over and over again until it just compels you. I, yeah, that to me was, uh, I mean, obviously we try and write with emotion, but when you see how he does it and they structure it, that was, uh, that was a biggie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, the takeaway then for this little talk that we've had, you know, very quickly put together, did no planning at all. Huh? Why are we just sound like this? I don't know why. We can figure that out in a second. It's the body language. But anyway, the, 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 the attraction takeaway is to go think about your, your emails or your sales letter or whatever you're trying to sell and have a think about what sort of emotion. What what People have logical reasons why they buy stuff, but that comes after they decide they actually just feel like buying it. So go and have a think about what emotion, what emotional reason is someone going to buy your product or your service? And I think, yeah, that's a good a good end. I think tomorrow, so we're obviously going to touch on other things, but how these guys get to that, as in how they figure out the emotion, like what they do to get to that point before they write copy, mm-hmm. I think that's something that I didn't realize how deep they went. So I think actually kind of giving them a bit of a heads up into... We could go about this all yeah. day. So who we got tomorrow? We got Perry Marshall in the morning. Perry Marshall. Say. My favorite, I'm looking for, is Jay Abraham. Jay Abraham, is, I a bit of an idol of mine. I mean, I used his stuff, his free stuff. He gives away, mm-hmm. I mean, he gives away so much stuff for free and I use his stuff to get my business to where it was. I mean, mm-hmm. he, he gives this stuff away. He's a, he's a legend. And then Fred, Fred Katona, I think he's a billionaire. He's a yeah, the radio guy. Line. Is it the radio guy? Yeah. yeah. Too yeah. many people. Anyway, so lots of cool stuff coming to our, we're going to tune in again with a video like this. Perhaps it'll be a bit, uh, you know, a bit more practiced. Cause this Less tired. Less tired. Less I mean, tired. we just dropped a coffee. We're about to go out for dinner and hang out with some of these guys. So we'll see you again tomorrow for another Times of Direct Response summary. And uh, nice to meet then, you. Peace. Oh, really? No. <laughs>